Hello everyone and welcome back to another day of our 30 day biology study challenge. Today we're on day 19 and we're going to be talking about protein synthesis. Throughout this video we're going to be doing a content review and some practice questions so make sure you get some scratch paper because we're going to be doing some transcription and translation along the way. And I have a link to a codon chart in the description of this video so if you don't have one handy go ahead and click that link so you can access one for the practice. Let's get started. Now DNA is found in the nucleus of a cell and the DNA is usually in chromatin form, meaning it's unwound or decondensed, but when a cell is preparing for cell division, it'll condense into these chromosomes. So if we look here, we kind of see the organization of DNA. Our DNA again is wound into a double helix and it's very, very long. We have over 20,000 genes in the body and this long strand of DNA is wound around special proteins and then that is all condensed up into a single chromosome. But each section of DNA that codes for a specific trait or provides instructions for a particular protein is called a gene. Now, not Every single part of our DNA codes for a protein. Some parts of our DNA are there to regulate what parts of the DNA are turned on or off. Some we don't know what they do, and some, again, may be relics of viruses from the past. Sometimes chromosomes are represented like this, with each band or segment representing a particular gene or set of genes. We say DNA gives us our traits. So how do we get from a strand of DNA all the way to an actual trait, like the color of our eyes? Well, it all depends on proteins. And so protein synthesis is the process of how the message of DNA is transformed Transcribed and then translated into proteins. So synthesis just means making. So if you're trying to remember what protein synthesis is, just think about how we get proteins, how we make proteins from DNA. Let's see how this works. So remember the DNA is in the nucleus of eukaryotic organisms. So we have our DNA strand, it's gonna be split apart and it's gonna to start to be copied as mRNA. And so this mRNA strand will build basing itself off of part of that DNA strand. There's a couple of differences between mRNA and DNA, and one of those things is that instead of T's, RNA has U's. So when we pair with A, we're gonna match it up with a U instead of a T in mRNA. RNA is also single-stranded, so once it's done copying the DNA, it'll leave the nucleus, the DNA will go back together, and then the mRNA will reach the ribosome where we can do the rest of the work, the translation part, where we're gonna get our tRNAs, which are another type of RNA, are gonna match up with the message on the mRNA and bring over these little molecules called amino acids. So glue here, that's one amino acid. And as these tRNAs match up with the code on the mRNA, we're gonna bring more and more amino acids over and they will be linked up by bonds here. These are peptide bonds and we will start to form a protein. And once we have our amino acids linked together, we have our polypeptide or our many peptide chain and that will result in our protein which will do the job for the cell that we need it to do. It gets very long and it folds up in a specific shape so it becomes a functional protein like an enzyme for example or a pigment protein that'll color our eyes. So again some differences between DNA and RNA. DNA is double-stranded Think of that D for double. RNA is single-stranded. DNA has actually a, a different sugar than RNA. It's a deoxyribose sugar. RNA has a ribose sugar. And then, of course, DNA has Ts, where RNA has a U as one of its bases. So let's practice here. If you want to pause the video and write down the mRNA sequence you think would go with this DNA strand, go ahead. I'll give you a second. And here it is. This is the RNA sequence that would come from this DNA strand. So now we have a message in our mRNA that can be taken out into translation. Now, if you confuse transcription and translation, remember transcription, we're changing from one type of nucleic acid, a deoxyribonucleic acid, into another type of nucleic acid, a ribonucleic acid. We're transcribing it into a message. So thinking about you writing down a message that you're gonna pass to your friend, that's transcription. Translation, on the other hand, if you're translating something from English to French, you're changing languages. And that's what we're doing here in the cell as well. We're changing molecular language. And so we're going from a nucleic acid to an amino acid chain or a protein. So if you wanna remember which one's transcription and translation, think about which one's writing down the message, that's DNA to mRNA, and which one is getting us our chain of amino acids, or we're changing our language. We're going from a nucleic acid to a protein, so that's translation. Now, you might be asked to read something like this called a codon chart or an amino acid table where we're given all these letters here and it tells us which amino acids go with which three groups or codons of RNA. So for example, if our codon was UCA, we would start here in the center with the big letter U and then we'd find the C in the next level and then we would go to the outermost layer 
A, okay, so that's serine or S-E-R. This is an abbreviation for an amino acid. Let's try another one. How about A-A-A? So we start here in the center, A, A, and then we look here to see which one this touches. A, that's lysine. That's another amino acid. So every codon matches with a specific amino acid. Now there's other types of codon charts as well. You may see one that looks like this. You have to read them a little bit differently, but sometimes they're broken down very helpfully. All right, let's review that one more time because there are a lot of steps, and this time I'm going to add in a few more extra details that'll help if you are an AP or upper level biology student. Hopefully you remember a little bit about protein synthesis where the enzyme RNA polymerase is going Going to synthesize mRNA molecules in the 5 to 3 prime direction by reading the template DNA strand in the 3 to 5 prime direction. So we have our RNA polymerase synthesizing that molecule, the mRNA leaving the nucleus, and then undergoing certain modifications, which we'll get into a little bit later. And then in the cytosol at the ribosome, we have our tRNA bringing around our amino acids, and it recognizes each codon with an anticodon on the tRNA, and that amino acid chain is built from the mRNA transcript. In prokaryotic eukaryotic organisms, this happens all at once. Transcription is coupled to translation, but in eukaryotic organisms, we have this occurring in our different locations. Once we have our amino acid sequence, we can undergo even more protein modifications to get the final functional protein. Okay, let's do some more practice. Make sure you have that scratch paper, and remember, if you need access to a codon chart, there's a link in the description below with both the circle versions and the version in the table. All right, I want you to transcribe this sequence. Remember, we're going from DNA to RNA here. Remember, you can pause this video and go through it at your own pace, mute me, do whatever you need to do to make sure you get that practice in. Here we go. RNA sequence that would be built off of this DNA strand is as follows, A U G C G U A C. Remember, when RNA is being built, A pairs with U, not T. All right, we're gonna do a few more, so make sure you get your scratch paper ready. Transcribe this sequence. There you go, a lot of A's and one U and then a final A. Another. And correct answer is A-U-G, C-G-U, A-C-U. Here's one more. C-C-G, G-G-C, U-A-U. One more. A-U-A-C-G-U-C-C-U. All right, now we're switching it up. We have mRNA. I want you to translate it from the mRNA into our amino acid sequence. So make sure you get that codon chart handy because you're going to need it to do these. All right, correct answer is tyrosine, glycine, isoleucine. Remember that these short, these short words are just abbreviations for the full names of the amino acids, which you don't need to memorize. If you've got your codon chart, the abbreviations are just fine. So if you wrote TYR, GLY, ILE, you are in good shape. Final step here, we're going to transcribe and translate this. So start with your DNA sequence. Tell me what the mRNA would be that is built off this DNA sequence and then what the amino acids would be from that mRNA. Let's go. Make sure you pause. You ready? All right, so the mRNA would be UCU, UGU, AUU, and then our amino acid sequence would be SER, CYS, and ILE, if we're going by the abbreviations, serine, cysteine, and isoleucine. All right, thanks so much for sticking with us for another day of the 30-day biology study challenge. Tomorrow is day 20 gene expression. Be sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our other study challenge videos or study resources on this channel. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful, and I'll see you later.